My next guest on Psychonautica is Dr. Charles Nichols. He's a brain researcher in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics at Louisiana State University Health Sciences Center. In his research, Dr. Nichols uses state-of-the-art functional genomic and molecular methods to investigate the brain's genetic response to LSD. Dr. Nichols, welcome to the program. Uh, thanks, Kano. It's good to be here. Now, in addition to your affiliation with uh, the Louisiana State University, you're also a researcher for the Hefter Institute, is that right? I'm on their advisory panel, yes. Would you tell us a little bit about the Institute? Uh, the Hefter Research Institute was founded um, a little over 10 years ago, sort of as a, a legitimate academic uh, resource and institute to promote medical uses and further investigations into what I guess would be termed hallucinogenic drugs, studying on the mechanism of action of how drugs like LSD, psilocybin, DMT, uh, how they work in the brain and to exploit any potential therapeutic, therapeutic value to these medicines. As I understand it, uh, drugs like LSD used to be called something called uh, psychomimetic drugs, and that was psychotomimetic. psychotomimetic. I, I seem to have trouble with that word. And they were called that because it was believed that they uh, induced a state of mind that was similar to, if not functionally identical to, psychosis. Is that right? Right, right. And uh, at the time, and this was in the, the 50s and 60s, there was a lot of optimism in the uh, the community of psychological therapists and psychologists uh, for LSD and similar types of drugs to be used uh, in psychotherapy. And that seems to have been brought to a halt by the scheduling of LSD. Have I got anything wrong there, or what should we add to that picture? Well, that's in general uh, similar to what happened. Um, as you know, LSD was discovered in uh, 1938 by Albert Hoffman, and uh, neurotransmitter serotonin was discovered shortly thereafter. Um, well, actually in 1949, about 10 years later. And in the early 1950s, uh, researchers uh, for example, Woolley and Shaw at Rockefeller um, noticed the structural similarities between serotonin and, and uh, LSD and similar uh, drugs that produced hallucinatory or psychotomimetic states. And they actually proposed that perhaps um, therefore that there is a, a dysfunction in the serotonin system and mental illness and that using these drugs could potentially sort of counteract whatever defect was in there. And so you saw a lot of, a lot of real preliminary investigations during the 1950s and early 1960s, sort of exploring the link between uh, mental disorders and LSD and serotonin. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, in the 1960s, it hit popular culture and uh, was scheduled. There are a lot of folks in the psychedelic community who blame Timothy Leary for his uh, overly exuberant and possibly reckless promotion of the use of LSD among the general population. Do you think that without his contribution, that uh, it would have been easier for researchers like yourself to study the possible therapy or therapeutic benefits of LSD and similar drugs? Well, I, I think it's difficult to really pin the scheduling and sort of the embargo on, on this research sort of on one person, although uh, Timothy Leary did play a large part in really taking LSD out of the hands of uh, scientific researchers and the controlled studies and really telling everybody to tune in, turn on, and drop out. And when it hit that phase, sort of the, the culture of the times, um, it was almost like a, a fire ready to be lit. Um, and I, I think that, that definitely was a catalyst. Uh, but really, the reaction of the government to that at that point in time uh, really did embargo a lot of the, the serious scientific research in these drugs. And unfortunately, made it really hard to, to do any kind of research, just to get the licensing and the protocols done for decades. The reason that I uh, wrote to you and asked you to conduct an interview is because last week on NPR's All Things Considered, I heard a story uh, on LSD mm -hmm. research, and it talked about a new receptor in the brain that has been discovered, which plays a key role in uh, LSD's effect on uh, the human psyche. Would you tell us a bit about that new research and uh, what it tells us about how LSD works in the brain? Okay. Um, what what that report was about uh, was uh, a group that was looking at the effects of LSD and a non-hallucinogenic a chemical a relative of LSD called lyceride on the effects of the serotonin 
2A receptor in a specific part of the brain. And serotonin uh, actually has 14 different protein targets in the brain that it binds to and act, or within the body that it binds to and activates. And of these, it's uh, primarily the serotonin 2A receptor that mediates the effects of LSD. It's uh, absolutely necessary to activate this receptor to have all of the associated behaviors. And so what they did is looked at the somatosensory cortex part of the brain uh, with the two different, uh, the hallucinogenic LSD and the non-hallucinogenic glyceride, and looked at gene expression profiles uh, through, that, that were activated uh, through the serotonin 2A receptor and, and saw different genes being turned on from the different, uh, from the different chemicals. And their conclusion was that hallucinogenic molecules acting at this serotonin 2A receptor turned on one set of genes, while not hallucinogenic drugs acting at the same receptor turned on a different set of genes. So it's sort of uh, a marker or a screen, uh, a profile of gene expression patterns uh, for the two different classes. I wonder if you would uh, unpack that just a little bit for a, a non-technical audience. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, that brings me to, to, to my, I guess, my particular research as I've been doing gene expression studies in the brain, and I've uh, been looking at a different part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. And as, as it turns out, uh, drugs like LSD, uh, well, they, they have very acute effects where when a person takes the drug, then within a minutes to a they have the behavioral effects, the hallucination uh, associated behaviors. And that's, that's likely due to sort of uh, immediate, immediate action within the brain and how the cells talk to one another and, and what's going on. But further on down, how the cells talk to one another, it also changes and modifies different genes that are being expressed in the brain. And these different genes that are expressed in the brain then could modulate uh, sort of long-term behavioral effects and changes like um, some of the negative symptoms associated with LSD is, could be sort of uh, what's been termed a flashback behavior or other effects or uh, as the effects of LSD might be related to schizophrenia. Um, one of my working hypotheses is that some of the genes that are turned on in the brain by LSD may represent genes that are abnormally expressed in schizophrenic patients. And so uh, my work and the work that was described on NPR, I think, are significant steps in, in to understanding how genes in the brain coordinate to produce normal cognitive function. And uh, when those go wrong, either through a natural process of schizophrenia development or taking a drug like LSD, um, looking at how those change, then we can develop novel therapeutics to, to treat certain behavioral disorders like schizophrenia. Would you say a little bit more about gene expression? particularly as a result of uh, LSD or other serotonin-like compounds in the brain. When I think of uh, the expression of genes, I think of bodies. I think of physical structures that are created in response to the activation of certain segments of the genome. Um, but it sounds to me like you're saying that uh, the, the psychological effects of LSD, which occur soon after ingestion, are the result of the expression of genes, uh, and I'm I'm not entirely sure I'm following that. So if you would just oh, say oh. a bit more about that. Yeah, well, I think the, the the immediate effects of when when a person takes LSD, that those are mediated. Uh, that's governed by how the cells in the brain communicate with each other. Uh, for example, the the LSD turns on these receptors which modify how a, a neuron fires, whether it increases its firing rate, decreases its firing rate, and that cell-to-cell -cell communication 